<laughs> Nobody can touch me when I do my kata. <laughs> when I get into the zone, it's only me and the stresses of life can't touch me. For that few minutes, it's like I can detach from the world and it's just that moment of concentration and just me doing the thing that I love and I love it. <laughs> I'm Andrea Anakin, your Karate Olympian and I'm really excited to be representing New Zealand in Tokyo 2020. Hello Sensei! Hello Sensei! Hello. 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 It's like my second home because Sensei actually built his house with this in mind, like with a dojo. And he goes, you know, if you're nervous, just text me, call me, and you can come anytime. So I'm really grateful for that. <coughs> this place is full of good memories and just lots of like family love. <laughs> so I remember we, us coming here during the summer and training the whole day. He'd make us food and make us nap on these mats, and we'd wake up with like the marks on these mats, but it was really just like good memories. I think I started competing when I was five and a half. So it's been 25 years of my family kind of supporting me. My dad used to iron my geese, it's all nice and crisp. <laughs> and my mom used to tie my hair, you know. We wanted her to, to, do, to, ballet. to do ballet. But she doesn't want ballet, she, she wanted, really wanted to do karate. When I was four, my mom brought me to this uh, studio. It was a dance studio. We did a lot of classes like taekwondo, ballet, karate. And I used to be a kid just watching it. Her eyes are very wide. She gets very excited. She watches all the kids um, training in karate. And then when the ballet students go in with their tutus, <laughs> she, she loses interest. She's like, ah, I'm hungry. Let's go eat. That's it. And she was four at this time and she really had her mindset yeah. on it. Yeah. She was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do ballet or karate? And I was like, what? I was like, karate, of course. And she's like, well, why? And I go, well, if I do ballet, if I get kidnapped, am I going to dance for them? <laughs> but that's in the Philippines because, you know, she never stopped from four years old. She started winning gold medals when she was what, eight, very early. In karate, kumite is uh, when you have an opponent and you're physically fighting them. But in kata, in each move, kind of like, you know, it's a martial art. I see it as kind of like the art form of karate. When I was a kid, I'd be scared of kumite. Fighting people for me was kind of like scary. <laughs> but um, I used to cry, but then fight anyway. And then after the fight, I'd feel better. Win or lose, I'd feel better. My sensei at that time, he's always like, do you want to stop? Do you want to stop karate? And I'm like, no, I love it. I want to carry on. <laughs> so ever since I was a kid, it's always been a part of me. We were the punching bags growing up. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds really bad, but I think and then Angelo outgrew her. Angelo and his Erica. We were wearing Andrew's medal. So we had one each. I was still taller than my siblings. <laughs> Moving for the Philippines was a really big adjustment. Not just the language and you know the culture, but my parents had to adjust to all three of us siblings being here as well. It was a struggle when we first came here because um, we can't find the right dojo for the kids. My dad was adamant that I wasn't going to stop karate. And he's like, look, you've been doing it for years and you're not just going to let it go. Before we found Sensei Johnny, my dad used to train me at home. We went to several dojos before we found Sensei before Johnny and yeah, yeah, before we met yeah. him. You need to find the right Sensei for her to excel. Because it's a personal relationship, he just took our kids under his wing. Yeah. They're second family. Yeah, they are, yeah. A lot. A lot of sacrifices. Sensei is like the second dad. <laughs> People say the same thing in the world. They say, is your daughter coming today? This tournament? Well, I don't mind people say that because how long I've been together teaching her, I don't know, like about 20 years, 17 years, 
years and um, I treat, actually I treat all my students like my kids. I yell at them and scream at them because they are my kids and I want them to do the right thing. Okay, okay, ready? When I first met Sensei Johnny, I was really intimidated. <laughs> so he had a different teaching style to all of my previous senseis. I remember he used to be like super strict on me. Like, no smiling, do your kata. And smiling and laughing is kind of like my defense mechanism. But I learned for it not to be. And so he'd be like, okay, you have to say your kata super loud. And I'm trying to scream like with my little lungs, <laughs> you know, as a 14 year old. And he's like, not good enough. And so he would use to lock me out of the dojo. And then he'd be like, you're not going to go in until I can hear you from inside the dojo. And this was me kind of like at Auckland Uni at the basketball gymnasium. And he locked me out of the dance studio. I was screaming my kata. All of these people were looking at me. And I was like, I want to train. I'm going to do this. And so I was screaming my lungs out. And he opened the door and he's like, OK, you can come in and we can start the kata. <laughs> I'm straight to everyone, actually. I'm, I'm friendly. But when it comes to karate, I want to get it done well, properly, because I am the war referee. I've been war referee for many, many years, and I always deal with the champions. I love the way that he trains me, because it produces results, and he tells me that I love torture, so I kind of do it, right? <laughs> she has this like laser focus. When she sets her mind to something, nothing else matters. Well, she don't give up. Um, I remember once during the training, she dislocated her shoulder, and which I tried to help her to put it back in sport. She's crying, and in the past, I can put it back quite easily, but this time she really suffered. Finally, the specialist was like, look, it's affecting your everyday life. You need to have surgery. And I said, well, what about my kata? What about karate? And he goes, you have to really think about this because you might not be able to go for it anymore. Then she had to went to surgery and she cried. I was saying, well, it's not our plan. If God asks you to come back, you'll be back. After rehab, after a lot of physio sessions, Sensei Johnny was like, look, I see that you really want to go for it and you really want to come back. And I was like, even if I train just my lower body, please take me back. <laughs> God said, you're not retiring. And I'm like, okay, and now I'm back and now I'm going for the Olympics. <laughs> Who knew, you know? She said it was going to be her her last tournament and she was going to retire and then all of a sudden, you know, to the Olympic Games and it's like, okay, I'm like, oh cool, let's go. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> My parents, you know, when they talk to friends, they'll be like, we have an Olympian and for me it's kind of like, oh, oh, like, you know, that, that's me and it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> I'm very proud for karate, for New Zealand, we actually in the Olympics instead of the chat for Australian. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is something that I never dream about. Wearing the silver fur means a lot to me. Philippines hold a special place in my heart because that's where I was born, that's where I started karate. But New Zealand has adopted me into the country and I've been representing New Zealand since I was 15. When I first going for the Oceania of the um, Examination for my referee, I give up my Malaysian passport. I'm Chinese, but I'm cute. It's always been kind of like a proud moment for me when I sew the New Zealand fern on my chest and, you know, stand there in the podium with the New Zealand flag wrapped around me. When New Zealand flags go up, it's just like my tears almost come down. So I wish that would happen to her as well. I mean, I already tell all my friends that my sister's going to the Olympics, and if she took out a medal, I'd probably. I'd probably use that. Uh, <laughs> my sister won bronze as well. Oh, book of silver, gold. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's an accident. Whoops. If she won a medal. I told Sensei, look, whatever the Lord's will is, may it be, but we want to aim for a gold medal. <laughs> I'm quite sure she can get a medal. Yes. I'm quite confident. <gasps> I'm gonna be, I'd probably pass out. <laughs> and then just, just wake me up and say, hurry, she's, she's yeah. gonna get her medal soon. May I be bawling my eyes out? <laughs> yeah.
you'd always get what people call haters, a lot of doubters, but it's always been overpowered by those people who believe in me. Someone told me that when I just stepped off the podium for my Oceania Championships, and this guy was really high up in the sports community for, for karate, and he didn't know that my mom was there going, oh, you know, that girl that got the gold medal, she'll never get far because she's too top heavy. And then I was like, man, I'm here to prove him wrong. But then I turn around and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it for him. <laughs> this is something that's going to be with us for the rest of our lives, something that no one can take away from yeah. her. Yeah. It's an achievement. It's probably the greatest achievement that she can have. In, in her sports, in her discipline. Wow, <laughs> what am I most excited about? So many things. <laughs> kind of like being the arena, being that environment, wearing the silver fern, being there with Sensei, uh, being in Japan for karate and the Olympics. Once I see the arena, hopping on the back, my nerves and my excitement are like off the roof, but then I have to dial it down. 100%. Come on, let's go. <laughs>